the benefits of being a student athlete. So we're going to go through them in detail. You're going to be surprised why being a student athlete has such not only appeal, but actually can make you a lot of money. So specifically, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the fact that student athletes can and do get paid right now. Number two, we're going to talk about how the unique skills and talents of being that athlete can create an extraordinary business lifetime, regardless of injury or whether you're with the team or not. And number three, how should you be managing your money? Hence, the number one problem in sports. In pro sports, only 3% of professional athletes at the end of their career, whether they get injured or just you know time out or quit, only 3% actually have the money or even a portion of the money that they made during their career. Now, that is just lack of education, in my opinion, because they didn't know what to do. They're scavengered. I've watched it over and over and over. They're scavengered by very specific financial planners, which is not what you need first. You need them later. You need me first. You need someone who actually can structure your account first. So let's begin. So how do student athletes make money? Well, up until July of 2022, right? They would do camps. They could do some personal training. They could do some other businesses around. But really, July 2022 just changed it all. NIL became a thing, which is name, image, and likeness. Many of you have heard about it. It's surprising how many people don't even know it exists. But it is a way for them to really brand themselves like pro athletes get to. So should you take NIL money? It's always been a question. I've had a lot of a lot of student athletes come through a link. I actually designed a site called financialfitnesstrainers.com. On there is some training that I did for some of the Georgia Southern uh, men. I've taught the basketball and football teams there. This year, I'm going to do a few more schools and teaching the athletes and the teams. So I haven't gone through the collectives yet but I've gone directly to the teams and worked directly with the men on basketball and football. Would like some more sports. Uh, in fact, there's a bunch of you uh, women's sports that I'm gonna be calling and going after. So what else can you do if you don't get NIL money? Because there's a pro and a con, and I'll get to that at the third point of making that kind of money when you're that young and without proper guidance. So number two, just in general, how could you make money? So you have skills, you have talents, and I don't even care if you have a lot of NIL money. Start learning to be a good entrepreneur. You're a good player, not an entrepreneur. To be an entrepreneur, you've got to learn marketing, which means you got to understand how to use a database. I'd love to do that. We actually can do that for you. you got to understand how to cash flow, uh, and you got to understand how to sell. And a lot of athletes, and not only athletes, that happens in Hollywood and the entertainment world too. You go through your career, you have this amazing following. You don't build a database, so when your following is over because your career is over or taking a little bit of a dip, your followers go away. So we have a way to actually sustain followers for your lifetime, which then you can monetize for your lifetime. If you have a following now, the only reason they're not following you is because you didn't put them in a database. So if you click on the link below, askrms.com, it's just a cool way that we can help you build and sustain a brand and the database following. Because there's a lot of brand people that are working with you, athletes or even entertainers, but they're working on, again, the branding. They're looking at your look, your style, getting maybe sponsorships, but I am the infrastructure of it. What bank account are you putting that money in? What corporate structure should you be having? Do you have the database? Do you have the team and systems to hold the money you're about to make? Now, I had a lot of NIL guys actually just take it and trade. So they don't have the tax consequences, which we're getting into next. See, if you don't know, learn to be a really good entrepreneur, you're not going to manage your taxes. You're going to get killed in taxes. And so many of you spend your money wrong. And I get it because you haven't had money your whole life. So you want that jewelry. You want cars. You want women. You want all of that. And that's what you're spending your money on. I know some NIL parents, fathers specifically, who have reached out to me and said, this can't be happening. My kids are getting money and they're down to less than a thousand in a bank account and they're getting like 15, 20,000 a month and down to a thousand, which means you're spending wrong. The bigger problem is you're putting your money in the wrong bank account. I'm going to talk about that next. I want to finish. What can you do in addition to your NIL for some of you to make money? And I would say become that entrepreneur, which gives you more credibility. And as you transfer out of sports life, you know how to be an entrepreneur. Let me mentor and teach you that now. So you could do and I have a lot of students, they're doing um, you know, skill training, they're doing specific player position camps. I mean, think of the Mannings. The Mannings have one of the biggest quarterback camps in the country. They make millions on that camp 
teaching the next generation of quarterbacks. So what can you do? I have other athletes that are actually more prone to nutrition. I have some women athletes that are doing, you know, stretching, very specific women's strength training. There's other videos you can do on recovery. I mean, y'all know this stuff. I mean, especially if you're playing at a D1 school, you have the facilities and the experience and the coaching to then pass that on and become that. Your heroes in your local community. Go back to your local community, start a company, do some summer camps, make some extra money. I have other athletes that cut hair, do videography. They'll actually cut your huddle videos if you need to do all of that, if your team doesn't do that. Pressure washing, blue collar stuff, changing oil, washing cars. A lot of you, you can have a business. Now we'll get to the third point, which is the most important, which is how do you manage this money? So you have a personal bank account and a business bank account, and the business bank account cannot be a sole proprietor. So I would love to give you a consult on what you should be and how you get incorporated. And you're not just going to go to some online, you know, legal like dot zoom kind of a site because no one's going to talk to you. It depends on, first of all, how much money you're making. How are you making it? Are they paying you into your personal account? Are they really NILing you or your company? And then from there, how do you activate the tax code? Because now you can write off wardrobe. You can write off your vehicle. You could write off your phone. You have a home office. And some of you are gonna say, well, I live in a dorm or an apartment. There's still deductions on of that. If you include your parents in this whole structure, I have a whole way of doing this. So I've been a single mom intentionally, 1999. I had my son, Logan, who just completed a five-year career at Georgia Southern, Jacksonville for two years, then Georgia Southern. Football the whole time, starting center the whole time. And he became my partner at 18 years old inside of a company. So then when I would fly to see my son play ball, I'd also see my partner. So some of you are going to take this advice. You're going to run down to your CPA or a local lawyer, and you're going to try to get this done. They don't know the behavior of it. So they might just get to an entity and charge you a bunch of money for that. I might charge you a bunch of money for insurance and trust. I have an integrated team who will do all of that in one move and in the right structure, depending on your state, how much money you make. Are you married? Do you have kids? Do you want your family involved? What are your goals? Are you having to send money back? I don't know how many athletes send money back to their families. So let's solve this problem. Put your first check in the right bank account and let me help. I'd even hold the check until we can have a conversation to tell you where to put it so you can maximize your money to you, minimize your savings and start investing. And investing in jewelry, cars and a whole bunch of that stuff, I know you kids are gonna hate it, but it's real. And if you can start putting that money away now, you've got 30, 40 years of compounding interest and power on your money, you'll be a multimillionaire forever. Not just a spike of a millionaire and then broke because that's the problem I'm solving is broke. So it's up to you if you want to be broke. You don't have to be. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe to my channel. Click that notification button. Would you please share this with at least 10 or 20 or your whole team? And parents, if you have a student athlete, call our office. You can always go to Ask Laurel, A-S-K, L-O-R-A-L, asklaurel.com, ask a question, make a request. If you are a coach or a player, additionally, go to financialfitnesstrainers.com. You'll click in whether you're a coach or a wife or a player. And then we take you through some education. I got a lot of free stuff out there. Check it out. Love to work with you. Don't put your money in your personal bank account. Talk tomorrow.